the parable of the Good Samaritan. This is not just a moral exhortation to go and do likewise. That's, that's great. Absolutely. We need to do that. And like it says in our first reading, the precepts of the Lord, uh, you know, are close to us. God uh, is giving us the grace kind of thing. He's, gi he's giving us the ability to do good. And then our, in our uh, responsorial song, the precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. It's good to do good. It feels good and it's, it's the right thing to do. But I want to talk about how do we read Scripture? Because if we don't understand the Scriptures, we can dismiss them. And the Scriptures are so rich. They, they are, uh, St. Jerome says, uh, negligence of the Scriptures is negligence of Christ. The Scriptures are so rich. They're the foundation for our Western society. So many things are rooted in, in Christian thought. Our, our art, our music. Um, but... Today, nowadays, scripture is, is really dismissed by so many. We've seen on uh, social media people kicking the scriptures around as if it was a soccer ball and laughing about it and then throwing it in a public uh, portable toilet. They don't understand what's happening here. And sometimes we read these scriptures, you know, they're, we're very familiar with them and there's so much more to it. The Lord wants to speak to us, a now word. So there, I want to speak about five keys for unpacking the scriptures. And there's so much more to it, and there's so much more about this one gospel that I can mention, but I'll just mention. The first key is knowing the literary genre, what we are reading. That helps us unpack and understand a bit more what is God trying to say to us here. Because the Bible is is uh, many books amongst one book. In Greek, Biblia uh, can be translated a library. Ou en français, bibliothèque. It's a library. So you, ask, you have to ask yourself, where am I in the library here? You know, in the Bible, we have uh, letters. We can read people's mail when we read the scriptures. That mail is yours. The letters of Paul, the letters of Peter and, and, and John. In the scriptures, we have prophetic literature, we have history, we have uh, poetry. So this helps us understand too, when we're reading something like, hey, is this a historical, is this a scientific fact? Or is it something that has a, a deeper meaning? Is it like a saga? Uh, gospel literature is on a, another realm of its own. So just knowing that, just knowing the genre helps us get to understand a bit more what's happening. But I want to focus on the four senses of Scripture. The literal sense, the allegorical sense, the moral sense, and the anagogical sense. The literal sense is, historically speaking, when did this take place? Who was the audience? Um, the allegorical sense is, how does this Scripture point to Christ? All the Scriptures point to Christ, and it wants to bring us into a relationship with Him. The moral sense is, what do we do now? What does the scripture call us to do right now? And the anagogical sense is, how is this fulfilled in the end times, in the, in the uh, last things? But I want to focus on the literal sense. So today we hear about the Good Samaritan. And this was written because Jesus wanted to bring unity between the... Um, the disunity between the uh, Jews. The Jews in Jerusalem thought that the northern tribes, those in Samaria, were only uh, half-breeds because in 721, after the um, invasion of Assyria, there was a deportation, but some of the Jews remained there and they intermarried. So they, the, the Jews from Jerusalem thought them less important. And then in today's scripture, when Jesus is asking the lawyer, who did the right thing? The lawyer can't even say it was the Samaritan. He said, the one who did mercy, the one who showed mercy. He can't even say the, the word. And Jesus here is, is trying to bring unity, restoration. And he turns the question around to the lawyer. The lawyer initially asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus turned it around saying, uh, who was neighborly, right? 
the, the Samaritan. So Jesus is trying to bring restoration to those tribes. And today he's trying to bring restoration to us. There's so much division um, in, in, in politics and in, in culture and stuff like that, but even in the church. And I noticed as a newly ordained priest, but pr paying more close attention to the Eucharistic uh, prayers, the church is often asking for peace and unity, those things that go together. Now, to speak about the allegorical sense, what's happening in the scriptures today? Who is the Good Samaritan? It's Jesus. It's all pointing to Jesus. And then we can look at the spiritual meaning of the, uh, the things said here. So the Good Samaritan bandages the one who is left half dead. Fellow sinners, our, our sin leaves us half dead. It leaves us ashamed. It leaves us um, stripped away, right? Stripped naked. And the Lord restores. And when the Good Samaritan, when he comes and restores, he, he pours oil and wine. Where do we see oil in our sacramental life? A baptism, confirmation, holy orders, right? The, the Lord is giving us an identity. He's restoring us. He's, he's uh, cleansing us, right? In baptism, it removes all stains of sin, or concupiscence remain, but. And then he cleanses him with, with wine as well. And we see that in Holy Communion, right? So the, the sacraments are to restore us, to bring us to unity with God. He brings them to an inn. We can say that spiritual sense of the inn is the church. God brings, them to the, brings us to the church. And he has an innkeeper. So the Lord is involving other people to put us on the right path and bring us back to, to our restored identity. And he says he will come again, right? When, when I come again, I will repay. But the moral sense, what are we to do now? To, well, to imitate this, and Jesus tells us in the scriptures, go and do likewise. We can do corporal works of mercy, such as feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing the naked, and when we know that we have been clothed with power from on high, when we've been clothed with our dignity, that God loves us, that he's doing all these good things because he loved us first, we can go and love other people. We don't earn our salvation. Yes, we show ourselves approved, but Christ who died on the cross earned our salvation for us. If we were to earn our own salvation, then the sacrifice on the cross would be in vain. But it's not. It's, it's for our salvation, for, for picking us up, for restoring us, bringing us to life, life in abundance. So again, that moral sense, how do we do this? How do we go out and share it? Well, spiritual works of mercy. We can, we can pray for the living and the dead. We can um, instruct others in the faith, right? All these good things, we need to learn how to do it. And that's why we're here at church. We're here to go, we're going to celebrate uh, the Mass, receive Holy Communion. And at this time when we receive Holy Communion, meditate on this rich gospel, there's so much more to it here, that the Lord wants to, he wants to pick us up like that wounded uh, man who was um, beaten, beaten and robbed, right? The Lord wants to restore us. He does that in the Holy Communion. It wipes away venial sins and it gives us an actual grace to be able to do likewise.